definitely a highlight for Subconnect Live, especially since we're on the eve of the Battle of a Paddle. So from London, the Olympics, to Dana Point, California for the highest profile stand-up paddle race in the world, Rami and Christina Zor. So we'll be talking about a lot of different things, their experience in the Olympics, of course, how they got into stand-up paddle boarding, cross-training, equipment, fitness, and maybe even diet. So uh, you want to get an insight into how Olympians perform and qualify and how you can have a better performance when you go out and paddle. So stay tuned. Rami and Christina Zor coming up in just a bit. So I'll see you in a bit. Your choice, either quad or thruster setup, or whatever your choice is. You got a beautiful foil. I think you got a nice little template here that'll be pretty versatile. Whether you ride a really big board or even a pretty small stand-up board, it's almost better to have five boxes in your board. Sometimes you can ride the quad. One nice little feature that we have in the box fin, you can use an FCS key to tighten it so you only have to carry one key, you don't have to carry a screwdriver. We had this nice swell that came by and I had uh, regular thruster fins on my stand-up paddle board. I went out and the fins were just a bit too small, they didn't have the right shape. The board was skidding on the bottom turns, off the lip and on the round houses. I switched to the Jerry Lopez fins designed for stand-up paddle boards and it just worked great. I was able to get good turns off the top on round houses and also on bottom turns. So I didn't have the Jerry Lopez fin at the peak of the swell but now I got them. I'm ready for the next swell and stoked. Alright everyone, and here we are, Rami and Christina Zor all the way from London. <laughs> uh, four months of traveling, so there they are. Amazing, huh? Oh, by the way, I gotta say, okay, I am all nervous here and excited because I got two Olympians <laughs> sitting right next to me. So uh, this is pretty impressive. But uh, tell me, so sprint kayaking, how was the experience, uh, the Olympics and everything? So. Obviously, you took away a gold medal, so that was uh, obviously a highlight. Rami got uh, another Olympic under his belt. Uh, quite a couple, quite an experience. Tell us about, about that. My experience was awesome. I just heard before all the time from Rami, three times Olympian, and always like something different. The Olympic is different, and it's so amazing. And I was like, okay, okay, it's a race. And I went there and yes, it was amazing. It was something really, really different. Just the atmosphere and, and, the, and the crow, cra crow, crow? Crew, crowd. crow crowd and everything was just amazing. All right, so let's rewind a little bit so that people can understand your background and, and everything that happened. So you're originally from Hungary, right? And you have a background in competitive sprint kayaking. And uh, I was a K1. And uh, but you also do K four. How how is that? Yeah, it's like uh, basic. It's a K one. So mm -hmm. usually you training and uh, go race K one. And we have a double, but it's K two. So uh -huh. two people are sitting in the board. And we have K four, but it's four people sitting in the board. So it's a uh, it's matter what you qualify for the race. You have uh, usually selection in your uh, country. And that time you qualify K1, K2, or K4. I qualify for the K4 this year for the Olympic. And what's the distance? The distance in Olympic distance, it's 500 meter, the K1, K2, and K4, and we have K1, 200 meter for the woman. The men is different because they have uh, K1 and K2, 200 meter, and K1 and K4, 1,000 meters. So and K2, 1,000 meters K2, too. Yeah, yeah, and K2. All right, so, uh, so you're originally from Hungary, and Rami's originally from Israel, right? And he is uh, slash United Born States. US, grew up US, Israel, that's right. Back, yeah. And uh, so how did you guys meet? 
Um, I I moved out here, back here to the States about 11, almost 11 years ago. And I lived at, uh, just down south from here in uh, Chula Vista, the Olympic Training Center. Mm -hmm. And Christina and the Hungarian women's national team came to for a tra couple of training camps uh, at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista. And obviously I knew who she was before, four-time world champion and uh, the best-looking gal on the team. <laughs> yeah. wow, so, you. you know, they came and we got to know each other. And um, they came, I think, three years in a row, right? From yeah, 2006, 2006 seven, seven, and eight. And, uh, you know, and we got into a relationship. And so we, they came for about a month, a month and a half at a time. And then we, I'd go to Europe for the, for the European, because most of our competitions are in Europe, and spend uh, most of our time in Hungary. And uh, obviously, Christina is there, so we got to be together. And then after the season is over, usually at the end of August, we spend another month and a half together. So all in all, you know, we got to spend some time together. And eventually, she moved out here. We got married. And, uh, you won. I won. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I brought her here. I, I tried this. Her. You tried this. Uh. And, uh, yeah, and ever since, uh, you know, we got married in Pochi, just down in San Clemente yeah. on the beach. Um, and, you know, then she discovered all this outrigger, surf ski paddling, and then eventually stand-up paddling. And that's kind of like how we got uh, involved with the sport. Oh, well, congratulations. I think that uh, as far as like achievements, like he said, already world champion, now you got an extra medal under your belt. Uh, you pretty much have done it, right? Uh, it's just uh, congratulations, pretty impressive. Yeah, it was a very hard teamwork, so I couldn't do this without Rami. I'm very happy. Well, I gotta just, me a lot. I just gotta say, and, and this is really important, I think, for us as as stand-up paddlers, uh, we have to say that you know the stand-up community and industry actually were behind me and Krista and really supported, not just by you know good job, good luck, actually you know uh, Sponsor. sponsorship and money that without it, Krista probably and myself, I could not coach her or travel, nor Krista to even qualify for the Olympics. So to the whole sub-community and specifically to BoardWorks, um, they really, really made it possible for us and we were very, very you know, grateful and, and lucky to be in that situation. And we love what we do, you know, and, and it was tough being a husband-wife team and you know, a lot of everybody <laughs> knows us, so it's not always, you know, everything's pink. But, you know, at, you look at the end result, and, and she did an amazing, amazing thing. And, you know, we always have that little tweaks between us. She's like, I want to go to the Olympics. You were there three times. Like, I want to be a world champion. You got four. <laughs> so now, you know, so now she just crushed me, and, and I'm, I can't be happier for, for her. So yeah. Olympic champion, yeah, that's pretty crazy. And uh, I got to say here, watching these guys uh, in stand-up paddle races, it's also something something to watch. Uh, I remember when Christina was, and, and I think Rami were starting to get into it, and they just got faster, faster, and faster. <laughs> and then, I'm sorry, Rami, but Christina kept going faster and faster and faster at a faster rate. Yeah. And the next thing you know, like you're watching races, and uh, Christina is basically pulling a pack of people drafting her. And I'll never forget that. I think it was... Uh, Oceanside? Uh, was at Oceanside, yeah. and Christina was on a smaller board, pulling guys on 14s. 14s. And I uh, think it was one guy on a 14 that beat her by a little bit, yeah. and all the rest were behind, including myself. Right. Yeah. You. I'm very proud of this race <laughs> because that time I beat Ramis Wall in the same board. Yeah, we were both on the same board. And same board, she same beat division. Me. Yeah. And, and ocean, not flat. Yeah. And that was a tough race. There was a lot of wind coming yeah. back into the harbor. was very difficult. And uh, at that point, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is something. So, uh, okay, so with all of that background, you guys are back. Four months of traveling, you're telling me. Yeah, it was four yeah. months. We left April to Hungary. We had a very long uh, selection process. And after to prepare for the Olympic again, six weeks. So I'm happy because I was at home. It's in in Hungary, yeah, right. so I I I get the chance to see my family and spend some time with them. But <laughs> I think for Rami, without ocean and 
and uh, just being coaching me it was a little bit more tough <laughs> but I really enjoyed it and uh, for me it was a very very good experience congratulations and uh, we're gonna take a quick break here but before the break I want to say thanks to BoardWorks for making it possible right and uh, I also want to thank BoardWorks because uh, this show is largely possible because of BoardWorks as well so make sure you know you support BoardWorks, support our Olympic a athletes here, support the show, and uh, they've done a lot for the community, and we'll just keep cranking, right? You guys paddling, and we getting the stoke out there. So, uh, Christina and uh, Rami Zor, uh, two Olympians, four-time world champion and gold medalist here uh, in uh, <laughs> sprint kayaking, and we'll be right back after the break. downwind or surf races, even flat water. It's got a partial coil, so that way the leash doesn't drag in the water. The adjustable end strap, so you can adjust it to fit a 12.6, a 14, or unlimited board. And there's also a loop around where it straps on your calf or your ankle, so you can bend over and pull the leash off really easily. Alrighty, and we are back with uh, Olympians, gold medalists, world champions, uh, all <laughs> everything here, Christina and uh, Ramizor, and now we're going to be talking about uh, equipment. So, BoardWorks team riders, uh, tell us what you guys have been riding, what you've noticed kind of works, what you've been paddling. Teach us about how to go fast. <laughs> You want to teach? You like to teach. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real teacher. I'm a good teacher. I can implement it that well. But um, <laughs> no, um, I think we both, uh, we really like the diversity that luckily we were on the BoardWorks team. So I think we found that the m, &M is a very fast boat. Um, it, it, it glides really well. It catches waves really good. Um, I think the only thing that I don't like it about it is myself. I'm not in good shape right now coming back from Europe and... Four yeah. months, can't blame Four you. Four months, my broke goodness. my wrist, took me a while, didn't do anything until I got here. In the last two weeks, two days, but um, the board is, is, is phenomenal. And the good thing about boardworks is, too, with Krista, she kind of like took a step back and slowly got into it with the balance and catching the waves. So we were able to take a Ohana board and start with that. Krista started with that. I started with the, with the M&M. And she really, like, within a week, I think, she got back on the M&M &M and feels really comfortable on that. So I think that board, especially the carbon one, is very, very good for the battle. The paddle is very light. Catches the world runners pretty good. If it's not going to be too choppy, it's going to be really good, I think, on the, that board. But, uh, um, you know, there, there's so many good boards out there. It's not that one board does, you know, you, you probably, if, if you're a professional sub bracer, we were talking about it with a lot of athletes. You probably need two or three boards because if right. it's side chop, you need one board that's really stable. If it's big runners and kind of flat, like a board like the M and M would be amazing, you know. So it um, has some difficult condition when it's that board doesn't run so good. So right. right. So then you have the Ohana, for example, right. that runs really well, like in the downwinder when when you need more rocker, more volume. Um, 
you know so it's pretty it's pretty it depends on you and again we are not surfers we are kayakers that are trying to do it standing up paddling standing right. up so um it takes us a little bit longer after each season we're new in europe you know just getting the feet and getting used to the balance and the waves and and, and you know boardwoods makes great equipment uh, but for paddle for example we really like the quick blade um you know jimmy's kind of Jimmy Terrell has the background of similar to us. He's right. a four-time Olympian in, in canoeing. So technique-wise and, and the whole thought behind the paddles and, and how everything biomechanically works, it's closer to us. So um, we really enjoyed the, you know, the product and, and their support too. So it's, you know, I think for Krista too, it's, we're trying to, we're, we're not used to paddling in water that's moving around a lot <laughs> right. in the ocean. You know, All this so. chop, wind and everything, yeah. right? That's why it was amazing, that Oceanside race. Yeah. You guys did so well. So uh, let's take some of the features here. Let's focus on flat water. That's obviously your expertise, right? So uh, what are the features like in the board that you say, okay, I've, t I've tried a lot of different boards. There is like this one thing or that other thing on this board that I really like. What, what were some of those features that kind of hit you? I like this. This works. I really like that... Uh Actually, I didn't uh, try so many boards because I'm so new in the sport and I just didn't have time to yeah. always trying and trying. So I, I, I always just peddling what I have, so I'm not really trying. But I, what I like on this board, the m and for the flat water, mm -hmm. actually it's really, really fast. And okay, it's a little bit tippy, but for flat water, it's easy to standing on it. Yeah. And it glides very well. Uh, actually, I, I pedaled uh, before in surf tech to the bark. Mm -hmm. It was very, very good on the ocean because that right. was flat. Right. And it was easier for me to stand mm -hmm. in on it at that time because I didn't practice so much. But I, I believe it just practice. So if I can right. spend a lot of time on the board, I can be comfortable on the ocean too. Like now we spending two, day, two times a day on the ocean and we try to <laughs> working out a little bit on the board and I feel the the how it's uh, getting better so now I'm, I'm I'm more comfortable than one week ago so yeah and I remember one time I don't know what race we went to and we we're just hanging out and uh, I think it was at the Newport Aquatic Center one of those races and uh, Christina was just saying like oh I just came from the beach. We were over the, at the beach, and there was like this huge swell, and uh, and we went out paddling, and it was crazy. And <laughs> remember, that, I, I remember that vividly. It's like, oh, it was like head high, and what are we doing here? And uh, so yeah, I really like to challenge myself like this. I know I'm a chicken, <laughs> but uh, I would like to learn it, so maybe my <laughs> learning grow it's a little bit uh, slower than other person who started when they are younger. I'm very relaxed to go, so I'm, I, I can wait until it's getting a little bit smaller or something, so I'm not jumping in the deep water so easily. So, but I really enjoy if I can surf or, or it's a condition for the good downwinder and you can go and I really yeah. like it. Yeah, but I think I think on the flat water, we're we'll coming back to where we started. Is the M and M is amazing because of the displacement hull design that it has, the rocker that it has. It looks more like a, a like a kayak, more you know, like a if if you want like a torpedo or, or displacement hull, you know. And the concept, it's always you know, kind of the balance between. Um, between surfboards which are flat bottom that you know you get the speed it planes up really good and then you maneuver right and the really round hulls like a kayak like ships you know right. that are tippier and then the balance you know comes into place and then like christina said people who are on the water since a very young age i mean like take jamie mitchell danny ching i mean those guys can balance anything i mm -hmm. mean you'll give them a I don't know, a couch, they'll surf down a couch and, you know, if it floats, you know. So for us, it's a little bit different. We're the same if you, we can sit so, down. Yeah. No, I've seen you guys sitting on some stuff. I'm like, remember, you're showing me yeah. some of the boats of the uh, NAC. And I was like, 
oh man, no way, I'm going to have, all, uh, maybe my foot yeah. can balance that thing while I have the other foot on sand or something. They're like ground. 18 inches wide yeah. and you sit in it and it's totally round. Maybe so. I need to lose some weight to, to get like my <laughs> narrower hips or something. But uh, no, you're right. And uh, going back on the background of the design of the M&M, you had Melvin and Morelli there, two guys who come from designing America's Cup uh, right. bo sailboats the fastest, sa fastest sailboats in the world, so a very different thought and concept there. And in flat water, obviously one of the fastest, if not the fastest board in the market. So, cool. Uh, enough gear talk. We're going to get into the real deal right now, coming up next with technique. I mean, if there is one thing that they if there is one thing these guys bring from uh, their kayaking background that really carries over, it's not really equipment, but uh, definitely technique. So uh, coming up next, right after the break. And we are back with uh, Rami and Christina Zor from London to California to the Subconnect live show. So uh, world champion and Olympic medalist and three-time Olympian Rami Zor as well. So um, guys, let's talk technique. This is kind of like the meat of the whole show here. I mean, you bring the highest level of paddling technique there is in the world with your kayaking background. And I would guess that a lot of that translates into stand-up. Probably not of it, not all of it, but a, a huge chunk of that. With stand-up, now you're using your legs more, so you have that factor. Uh, give us an insight into just some of the basic things that you, as a gold Olympic gold medalist and a three-time Olympian, that you've implemented that has made one of the biggest changes in in your stroke. This is something that once you kind of got it, it's like, wow, this works and something that people can implement. I think our benefit is because we are on the water for 20 years, paddling more than 20 years. We just, I think we learn how to feel the water. So a lot of people I'm teaching now stand up and I, I'm teaching how to paddle in the NAC. So a lot of people doesn't feel that catch and how is the boat uh, gliding. Right. So I think we are very lucky to know that and feel it because we did this uh, so long and it's a very similar uh, movement than a kayak. Not, not the same but similar and uh, we, we just, uh, how do we trans transition? Translates to translates very easily to the boards and paddling techniques. Because every paddling, it's a, uh, it's 
it came from the core so you you right. have to work on that and where you put your hand it's it's just i think it's a secondly thing yeah i think like what we try like for me coaching christina for example she like i said everybody knows she's a four-time world champion and i coach her i just corrected one little thing but it was a major thing for example in her technique and kayaking technique and what it was basically she pushed too quick with the top hand okay still yeah still sometimes <laughs> and it's a habit but in sup it's exactly the same thing you know you want to keep and this is the same reason in kayaking you want to keep the blade in a positive angle for as long as you can so you see this is also why the blades are pitched between i don't know six to twelve degrees and somewhere around ten degrees um because when you catch the water, you want to be in a in a positive angle. As soon as you pass the blade in an in a, the 90 degree, what happens is you pull water, you pull your board down to the water and pull water up, and that creates more drag and that actually slows you down. So this is talking about like you know laboratory conditions, flat conditions. Right. Yeah, um, we just figure out other things because we are a flat water kayaker. We want to glide the board, yeah. But we just, I just figured out, out right. in, in the wave, it's so different because the, the uh, water is moving. So we sometimes we need a shorter, uh, faster oh, stroke right. rate. So this is what is new for me. This is what I try to now figure out how I can move with the, with the water mm -hmm. or against the water faster. And uh, Ramis helped me a lot with this because he can see me outside. <laughs> when I'm pedaling so long and hey, hey, shorter, 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 just move and I just... So okay. you mentioned like pushing a bit too early, too fast. So what is the right time when you really unlock and unleash that Well, it's kind of hard to say exactly. And again, this is what Krista said, you know, she is a perfectionist and the same. That's what you have to do on the flat water. That's where we come from. So you want to get a really good, nice reach, extend your hips, extend your, your waist a lot and not just work with the hands or the body up and down, right? Because you want to get that full body rotation. If you look at Danny or Jamie, you can see those top guys or Candice like really extend on, when it's flat and they're on a bigger board or the board's got better glide, really extend and work a lot with the body. You see the top hand is almost straight. It doesn't bend a lot, it doesn't push a lot. What you see a lot is that rotation. Um, but again, like Christina said, you know, that's if, it's glass. Right. Now, it's very rarely glass when you get on the ocean or, or battle the paddle, right. not even to mention that. So in that case, it's kind of like there comes the feel and people are in the water, grew up on the ocean and know where the current in the water is going. We go over a wave and you know the water is pushing back out. A lot of time, for example, when you go over a wave when you go out to the ocean, the water starts going back into the ocean. So if I go and do a really long, hard stroke, I might be better off doing a couple of small ones because if I just put the, my blade in the water, the water's going to take me out. That's right. That's something I didn't think. I hadn't thought of. You're right. Like So in flat water, the conditions are perfectly controlled. Yeah. The stroke is exactly the same. Exactly. The entire sprint. Yeah. Whereas like in the ocean, like you said, you go over a wave and now there is the water sucking you back. Yeah. You might want to go short stroke, high cadence and try exactly. to get out of that suctioning thing. You're going a long distance, a lot of bump. You can't be like crouched down. You got to have like stand up, more relaxed, using more full right. body rotation. So that's something I had not thought of. That's right. Yeah. The complexity of the stroke is much it's higher now different. because conditions are yeah. varying. Yeah. In many and this degrees. is what we learning now, the the yeah. wave stuff Practicing, and the yeah. ocean stuff because flat water I think we are really good. But uh, for the ocean well, obviously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> for the ocean we, we have to learn this this how it's how it's how we can uh, improve our technique. And it goes both that. ways, you know. We have a lot of guys coming from Australia and New Zealand, South Africa that are great for example in our sport, surf ski right and the paddle and race in the ocean but they come on the flat water they're like two three seconds like which is a miles compared like in, in our sports but i can't even be close to them or, or you know christina is like when it's really big and these guys just know how to catch every little bump right you know so i think that's kind of like well i think we're gonna see more and more people coming from both uh, both sides of the spectrum of the sport the more traditional kayaking or canoeing or, or even you know triathletes uh, guys that are doing this that way 
And you got your regular surfer surfer yeah. bums again they're not bums but you have to have that talent and and you know grew up in the water and surfing <laughs> that pick up from them the, the whole training habits and being an athlete and i haven't mix. picked that up yet <laughs> i'm still bummed nah, you, you rip man but I'm that's the thing bummed. we can we it's inspire it's inspiring and we admire people like yourself and other surfers like you know we're surfing today in cardiff and Chris was like, did you see that guy? He just jumped over the wave and get back on it and continued surfing, you know? And this is an Olympic champion talking about, you know, right, just local right, kid who just yeah. rips. Right. So that's what's great about this sport, you know? It's, uh, you can always learn. There's always new things. And we just try to take from what we know and what we do on an everyday basis, to try to apply to stand-up paddling and learn. And it's a lot more fun. When you catch that yeah. wave, you know, there's yeah. everybody who ever surfed in his life ha knows that it's feeling. Different. So when you're yeah. training in the flat water every day, two times, and no wave, and just just hammer, uh, it's not that fun. <laughs> so this one, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, because conditions are changing, right? So yeah. you get that it's one ride, and different. you try different. Yeah. But I think too, we were talking about this, me and Krista, about stand up paddling. If if you want to be really one of the top guys or gals over there. I don't think the hundred percent of the training is done on stand-up paddling. You know, a lot of right. people find, I think, at least fifty percent of the work if it's running, swimming, paddling, outrigger, surf ski, prone paddling. And we're gonna get into this yeah. because uh, we so, want to talk about fitness, fitness. and uh, and cross training just a bit. So two things just to recap, recap that you mentioned that at least struck a chord with me. Number one is you you mentioned core. You know, you've been doing this for like over a decade, what, 20 years, you said? Yeah, 22 years. Yeah, 22 <laughs> years. And you mentioned <laughs> core. And you said how important having that strong core is for your stroke. Uh, you know, Rami brought up a lot of it, arms and everything. But, but you said, hey, you want to engage that core. You right. want to have that hip rotation. Exactly. You want to use your bigger muscles, your torso. And developing that core is key because you might have the right form. But without having the right muscles to carry that out, you might actually get injured. Mm -hmm. And I have a personal story on that. I was just talking about injury uh, in the previous show with Jillian. And I've had almost every injury you can think of uh, related to stroke, shoulder, elbow, hand, wrist. And one of the things I noticed, strengthening your core is like the number one thing in my experience that you can do. Mm -hmm. to be strong, avoid injury, and go fast. And, it's, uh, it's good for the life, too. Right, right, <laughs> right. Posture, yeah. Yeah. anything, right? So uh, anyway, one big lesson, get the core, get the core going. And another one is learn the whole rotation, right. learn that you're not using just your arm to push, it's your whole body twisting together. Right, if you just work your arm, down. you'll get tired really quick. If you engage your whole body, more efficient, stronger, and you can go faster for a longer time. And a third point I thought was very interesting too is mixing it up because yeah. conditions change in stand-up mm -hmm. paddleboarding. You can't just stick to the one type of stroke because it might not be the most efficient okay, mm -hmm. for the court, long course exactly. of that race. So mix it up, try different things, see how the water moves and try to adapt to that. So um, a lot of good stuff in there, see? <laughs> see, a lot of good stuff. That's why we want to talk about that. So... Uh, Coming up, we're going to talk about fitness, diet, and the battle of the paddles. So uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and be back. See you guys in a bit. It's a really great leash for racing downwind or surf races, even flat water. It's got a partial coil, so that way the leash doesn't drag in the water. The adjustable end strap, so you can adjust it to fit a 12.6, a 14, or unlimited board. And there's also a loop around where it straps on your calf or your ankle, so you can bend over and pull the leash off really easily.
Okay, and we are back on the SubConnect Live show with Olympians. Okay, <laughs> Rami and Christina Zor. Uh, Christina, four time world champion and a gold Olympic medalist. Uh, so, anyway, we're already touching on this, um, but uh, now we can talk about it in more depth, and that is cross training, right? What else to do? You don't want to just do one thing. Pretty much every guest we've had on the show, they do a lot of different things. You know, Slater, he likes swimming. Uh, Jillian, she likes running. Uh, everybody has like their own different thing. Mm -hmm. What do you guys bring to the table as far as like uh, cross training? What has worked for you? I think you won't be surprised if I say kayaking. <laughs> 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 do a lot of kayak stuff. And actually now we don't want to touch the Olympic kayak. We would like to go surf ski more. It's, uh, it's really fun and it's uh, much faster than the stand-up. So I really like it. And uh, besides the water, we're doing uh, run. I'm actually running and we go to the gym or I should go biking. You should talk about it. And Rami loves to swim. <laughs> Yeah. So maybe we'll go to swim together. I swim like a rock. <laughs> so, but no, from, from and I love to see it. Yeah. She crushes me in swimming, that's why she likes it. She, I'm just kind of <laughs> trucking along and she just goes boom, 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 boom. But no, but um, yeah, like we, we talked about it and I think you can see a lot of the top guys, they, they don't do 100% stand-up paddling, you know. I think stand-up paddling, if you're just surfing, it's great and all that, but if you start to rack up the miles, um, it's it's a tough sport. It's uh, it's an endurance event, but it's a lot more like I think for me I found like going to the gym. So then a lot of you know elbows, shoulders. Uh, it's really tough on the body, I think. And I think for most of the season, the top guys, the top uh, the guys that are really up there. I think you can see they do in a lot of. Outrigger paddling, surf skiing, swimming, right. uh, really very diverse. So all the pressure would not be just on, uh, for example, stand-up paddling. So not you don't want to work on those angles so much, you know, because there's a lot of power on that blade. There's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, biomechanical forces that are working on it. And I think you know, unless you're very young and fit and very very healthy, uh, you might get away with it. But uh, I'm 35 years old, Christina's 21, you know, so I need to take it easy and go running more and swimming more and, and also be in the gym, so in order to avoid, you know, avoid uh, injuries. Um, but I think it's in any, almost in any sport. Like with Christina, I coach her now in the last two years. She peaked in her age now and, and it's she's paddling less in the kayak more in the stand-up, more in the surf ski, more in outrigger boats. In um, the winter. In the winter time. So it's a little bit, you bring down the, the, the intensity on the board, right. or maybe closer to the big races, get more on the board, but still be very fit, do mm -hmm. a lot of mileage. And I think that kind of training uh, really trans transports into the stand-up paddle board afterwards when you're healthier and, and you're more fresh to actually go and win races. And that's what it seems too, like a lot of some of the fastest paddlers, they're just having fun. Yeah. They're like jumping from like surfboards to uh, you know outrigger canoe and yeah. uh, surf skis. I mean, they're just going through all of these right. things, and uh, that's it's not just the hard kind of lifting way go and then back. It's just like, hey, let's go have fun, windsurf, kiteboard, paddle my right. surf skis, swim, surf, run. Yeah, so keep it fun. Uh, I gotta go and have these guys. Uh, <laughs> Just gruel, just gruel, gruel, like grill me and gruel me. You have a grueling. You guys, have, you're at the, you train at the Newport Aquatic Center, right? Right. And uh, you Christina has a program over there for stand-up paddling. See, there you, know, you go. If you want to go learn from an Olympic champion, there you go. That's that's your. I just started again. Uh, yeah, yes. that's your address, and I run a program over there for, basically, it's whoever wants. Most of my guys are outrigger paddlers. Uh, basically, it's a circuit training uh, session in the gym, but it's all designed towards paddling. So a lot of core work, a lot of legs, because believe it or not, Christina, at the end of the really hard race, 
the thing that hurts the most as a kayaker, it's your legs. Wow. You know, cause we use our leg, just yeah. different uh, angles, so yeah. we don't uh, standing on it, but we use it a lot. Right. So. Wow. Think about you want to pull something, and if you just use your arm, it's not right. that much power, but if you put your foot in it and you really pull on it, if you want to start a lawnmower, so that's kind of, you know, the, the power is coming from all the hip, the rotation, so it's shoulder. Much stronger than your arms. So yeah. You legs, back, you know, so it's it's really the overall, you know, like abs are important, but legs are as well. Right. And, you know, so it's the whole the whole thing. The and whole we stand up too because if you're using the rotation, the hips right. and, you know, having strong legs can probably help you pivot. Uh, I can that. see on the stand-up paddlers like Candy's, Brandy, not very strong in legs, so yeah. this is what I... I think anybody who raced, including me, especially me, when you're out of shape a little bit, the first thing that goes is your legs. You start yeah. to get the shaky legs, you yeah. know, on a, on a long race, yeah, and we just fall. buoy turns that used to be so easy, you you can barely do it. You yeah. know? Right, right. <laughs> so there you go. Strengthen your legs. I don't think we've heard that at all from any interview I've ever had. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you want to make sure you go to the Newport Aquatic Center, hook up with uh, Rami and Christina, go through their circuits, get training strong. And I know we talked about that earlier. I think it was last yeah. year. And I want to go there and, and check it out. Obviously, I'm down here in San Diego, but I definitely want to check it out. So, any di diet? I'm kind of curious. I mean, what do Olympians eat? It's uh, nothing special. <laughs> so, if you want something secret, it's not me. Uh, um, I think I really... I eat really common, no? I'm just... Very uh, diverse, I think. I don't go yeah. with everything so much. So I eat uh, dessert, I eat vegetable, I eat pasta, I eat everything. But I find the balance, but mm -hmm. it's good for me. So, example, I eat a lot of, lot of bread. It's... I love bread. So I'm not sure it's very healthy, but for me, I need it. I feel my my uh, system needs it. So I think everybody needs differently, but I think I find my balance. How can I uh, make the Your diet, diet for your training. Look, Christina trains three times a day. You guys have to understand. So it's a little bit different than our average stand-up paddler is even above average. She has a, an hour and a half session in the gym. Before that, in the morning, another hour, and between an hour 15 and an, uh, two hours sometimes in the winter paddling session, and another one, another hour paddling session after the gym in the afternoon. So that's a lot of calories to burn. So therefore, she can eat whatever she wants. Uh, <laughs> me, on the other hand, right now, a little bit different. I, don't train, I didn't train as much and everything. So I find also when you get older, your metabolism kind of slows down. And then, but the best way, and, and this I learned from the training, living at the Olympic Training Center and uh, being with a lot of Olympic athletes, just balance. You can eat right. anything you want, just as long as you have good balance with vegetables, as long as you have right. you know, protein, carbohydrates, uh, uh, fibers, and, and really, really important is hydration. Don't go extreme with everything. Yeah. I think this is the right. most important. Yeah. Right. You know, we took, I used to, we used to take a lot of supplements. We don't now, as I long as you eat good and and you know you have some this one drink or something that helps you in your long workouts that's pretty much it and i'm a true but believer actually in that. we are lucky i think we have a good uh, uh, body how do you say it so i somebody is not that lucky somebody eat one chocolate and get right. uh, weight, right, gain right. a lot of weight so i'm sure everybody has to find their own way i think I'm really lucky, Rami is lucky too. Yeah. Okay, he's old, I'm young, <laughs> but we, we can eat what we want. You, right gotta, you just have to find out what works right. for you and then go with that. But also, if you're working out really long sessions, you know your intake has to be matched to the time of work. And, and, that, and that it's work. great to hear that, to be honest. Like, yeah, you know, as a commoner, a common man right here, you're a regular man, I'm looking at it and I'm like, these Olympians probably have like a huge wall with charts and lines on what I can eat, what I can't eat, and then you open their pantry, it's probably all labeled, and then you gotta weigh what you're having, I'm having so... Luckily, and we're not doing gymnastics, so <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, our sport is very good. So, I, I mean, you just made my day right there. I just feel like so much. Because I, 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 I had your philosophy, you know, you got to learn how your body yeah. responds to food, and you got to develop that inner sense 
uh, of what to eat and how much to eat and when to eat it. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm a big opponent of like these kind of stock, run-of-the-meal, big diets. Yeah, you'll lose 40 pounds. That's designed for a lot of people. But again, our bodies respond differently and mm -hmm. what really will make Actually, a difference. Actually, for me, it's harder to not losing weight. So for me, an example, in the winter time when I gain weight because I do a lot of gym, after when I start to do a lot of uh, endurance stuff, I losing my weight. So I had to find a way how I can I don't lose my weight because I need my weight for the power and because I'm yeah. a sprinter. So I just cannot go there like skinny yeah. and every wind just pick me up. Right. So so for me, that was the way I had to find how I not how I don't uh, lose weight. So. Right. Just common sense, you know. Yeah. Just common sense. That's rare these days. Yeah, it is. You're right. But the, yeah. the problem is, we live in Southern California. Everything there's a, you know, kind of like there's an app for that. that there's is. a there's a supplement for that. Yeah, there's a right. supplement for that. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And if you eat right, like we love to go to In and Out. We love to I eat like Chipotle. <laughs> you know, but but as long as it's not four times a week, right, you know, right. that's it's fine. You get yeah. your salad. You eat your steak. You eat, you know. Yeah, in and out is the one place I allow myself to go to. Everything else is plastic. It yeah. feels like it's so fake. But anyway, <laughs> there, is, <laughs> there is the in and out plug. Yeah. yeah. So everything else just seems like plastic. But we're not going to get into that. And uh, anyway, excellent insight. Gil P coming up. Obviously exciting. We yeah, already talked exciting. a little bit about that. And uh, how are you guys looking at it? Oh, I'm really, really excited, and uh, I can't wait to be there. <laughs> Look at the condition, it's okay or not. Actually, I'm more excited for the condition. And uh, yeah, we started the training for it, so two weeks now, two weeks, and we we are on the water every, every day, two times, so try to get ready for it. And I had a very amazing uh, experience for the last year. It was so much fun. And not the Hawaii one, the California <laughs> one. So I'm looking for to be there. What's your goal? <laughs> My goal, I'm an athlete, so I really want to do good. Um, if I can be a little bit better than last year, I would be happy. Like Last year you finished ninth? I finished ninth, so if I can bring these top, or six, top or so. six, I would be very, very happy. Yeah. I wish I were top nine <laughs> but no for me I just really I, I just hope to make the final and if I make the final we'll see what happens um, realistically I'm not in great shape I got the injury broke my wrist all that stuff but uh, I think I surf better now than last year mm -hmm. um, I'm a competitor it doesn't matter what shape I am you throw me in there I'll go for it you know <laughs> you have to stay Rami <laughs> yeah so hopefully I won't be in the heat with her and then she'll beat me because then I won't hear the end of that <laughs> But um, uh, you know, would nice. that would be nice. Yeah. Oh. Somebody else will pick the, the pants, pants in the house. Yeah, still I have them. So, <laughs> but this is this is the competitive nature of both of us, and and you push each other. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah it's amazing. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming to the show, and Thank uh, you. that's for having us. An honor. You got a big fan here. I feel like very <laughs> honored to be next to you guys, and and call you guys friends. So we'll see you at events and uh, keep racing. I'll see you, both of you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you, both of you at a distance. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, we didn't talk about that. <laughs> we didn't talk about that. No, let's not talk about that. But uh, anyway, so uh, keep paddling and we'll see you this weekend over the weekend. All for right, sure. thanks for coming yeah. in. Thank see you. you. Dad. Thank you. All right, stay tuned. And if you want to ask any questions uh, for the future shows, just uh, go to our Twitter page, Facebook page, uh, and also check for news on our website. Uh, if you missed any one of the parts of this show, go to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash subconnect. Just click on the featured playlist that says live, and you'll be able to watch all the different segments of this show and also the previous shows. Today we had several different shows. Uh, this is our fifth and final show for the day. We'll come back tomorrow with even more shows. we got Jamie Mitchell and several other athletes lined up for tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for all the support. Go out there, paddle. And uh, this is the SubConnect Live Show. So helping you connect with the paddle world and improve your technique. So stay tuned, and we'll be back tomorrow.